My name is Juliana Nicolasian with the Oklahoma State University Library. Also with me today is Tanya Fincham. And today is April 19th, 2011. And we are here with Velva Rents uh, to interview her as part of the Oklahoma Centennial Farm Families Oral History Project about the David H. and Emma V. Rents Homestead. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, thank you. Well, let's learn a little bit about the homestead that's located in Noble County. If you could, tell us how the family came to Oklahoma. Um, my husband's grandfather, David H., David Henry Rents, uh, lived in Missouri, and the story is that he was tired of farming where the trees were, and he wanted to go where there weren't trees, and he heard about the land run. And he left um, the city west of Ark City, I can't think of the name of the town, but was in line for the run and with his horse, and he got as far as, as a mile inside of Noble County hmm. and homesteaded. And they had, which I'm sure you know, but they had to stay on the land for a period of time and register it and so. Well, uh, when they settled onto the land, do you know of any of the early structures that were there that, that he built? He he built a dugout. Mm -hmm. There was nothing and he, they lived in the dugout for, I don't know, you know, a few years. And then he built a house up on top. He gathered rocks and in fact the rocks in on the fireplace here are from the basement of the rocks that he gathered. Mm -hmm. And he lined the basement the, where they lived with those rocks, so. And early crops, or, or what did he do to, to help sustain himself on the land? Uh, you know, he, he built two ponds and he fenced it. And they had, a, um, I think he planted some um, grain of, probably wheat or corn, and they had an orchard. Now, that wouldn't be right. That would be after his wife and children came. But they had an orchard and, and a garden, and always garden to raise their vegetables and food for their... And uh, did he come married, or did he meet his wife in Oklahoma? He was married, and they had... Um, I think four children. Okay. Were they all born on the homestead? Or? No. There, um, there were one for sure, and I have to think about that, that was born here on the homes, you know, on the homestead. But the others were born in Missouri, probably. Okay. And on the, the property today, what are some of the uh, original structures still standing? The house used to be, but it's been dozed in. The ponds are still there that he built. It's amazing to me that he built these two ponds that's still there. And uh, that's about it. There used to be a, sh a shed and a, a nice cave. They built a cave for tornado shelter. And uh, we have pictures of the house. Well, tell me about the old house. Well... Uh, there was the back porch with the, what is it, rains uh, boards that I have. Anyway, that was in the kitchen and the back porch. And they had a cistern outside of the house. And then they even had a pump inside the house where they had a dug well. I think the dug well there is about 50 feet deep it, that was there. And it was lined with the with the rock from the area. Um, and there were, in the basement was like two, two big rooms. And there was a stairway from the outside going down into it, and also from upstairs after they put the house on. There was a stairway leading down to the basement. There were two rooms in the basement. And upstairs, let's see, there was the porch in the kitchen, and a living room and two bedrooms. And do you know how it was heated? Uh, originally, I don't know. 
but there was oil produced on the uh, farm and there was gas and they had gas then to heat the house. Mm -hmm. They used the drip gas? Well, I don't know, natural gas from the... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you mentioned water. Did they have a, a windmill to draw it or was no. just the well? No. Uh, I remember Dave's aunt telling us that they had the well originally where they'd get their water would be at the east end of the corridor and she'd have to walk clear down to that well to get their drinking water. And water, uh, water is rather scarce in that area and it has to be deep. Well, in the two rooms in the basement, was one of them a cellar for, for canned goods and that type of thing? I suppose it would naturally be. Um, I don't remember any shelving or anything. They had the cave, which probably kept mm -hmm. their canned things, which I know that they had to can a lot of fruits and vegetables. And did your husband grow up on the farm? Not on that farm. Okay. Uh, now, his dad did. Uh, and the oldest daughter, that she came down, but she married um, a local person, and so she moved out. But all, I guess all of the um, Dave's aunts and uncles lived on that farm until they married. And actually until the 20s, early 30s, when the uh, Three Sands oil boom was going and uh, Dave's grandmother thought it was too rough of an element to be staying out there. <laughs> so uh, the, her two sons built a house in Tonkwa for her and them to live in. So what was David's father's name then? We'll get the right, right lineage here. My husband's, uh, his name was Guy Arnold. Guy, okay. okay. And Arnold is the family name. His, uh, the, I think it would be the great grandparents. She was an Arnold and she married a Ritz. So, Emma Victoria. <laughs> so. You, you mentioned that it was a rough time in the area. What was going on? Well, the three sins. I mean, you had shootings and and there were all kinds of... <laughs> uh, surely you've heard about that. Uh, and they were, of course, they had some wells on their property. And three sands would have been a mile at the most two miles from their house. Mm -hmm. So, because they lived... Um, just inside the Noble County. I mean, the farm was just inside the Noble County line. And so... Now, over time, um, when when Guy was living on the farm growing up, did they change um, what they were growing or crops produced or, or livestock? They had livestock. And uh, I think they had some... I, I hesitate to say if they had pigs. I don't remember that they did. This, the story that I remember is his granddad, I mean, their food was very scarce. And he'd gone to, I think, Ponca City, and there were some hogs somewhere, and he thought about stealing one to provide food, but he didn't. <laughs> so. Yeah, it was a rough time growing up in Oklahoma. Yes. Um, well, if, if it was your husband's grandfather, then, then his father had siblings. So how, how did, I'm trying to figure out how the farm came to be in your husband's hands. Uh, it's, it's always, you know, it's never changed hands. It's always been in David Henry. And then there, it's actually owned by, um, my two daughters, and then there's a cousin in Oklahoma City that owns like um, 30 or 20 some acres, 26 acres, I guess, a third, a two thirds of a 40. And then there's three um, daughters of 
uh, another one of the sons um, that live in, uh, one lives in New York City and the other two live in Minneapolis, or close to Minneapolis. And they still own their 40 acres and they're not, you know, they have very strong attachment to those 40 acres. And, and of course, with Dave, I, I have his 40 acres, so. So it would begin with 160? Yes. So each sibling got a, yes, some. Yes, and I think it was in the, um, it was after the oil production. There were, they, some of the siblings were given the opportunity to either have an interest in the farm or there was property in Tonkwall that Dave's grandfather bought and also in Blackwell. And um, two of them decided they wanted to live in Blackwell and they gave up their interest on the farm. Okay. And one of them in Tonkawa gave up her interest in the farm. So um, I'd have to write down who. No, that's fine. We're just trying to yeah. decide how it was split between the, mm -hmm. the kids, yeah. grandchildren, children, children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we, we find that it it sometimes is a hairy situation through the years with dealing with family and land and the property. It's been uh, amazing. There's not been the strife within the brothers and sisters, and and still with my daughters and their cousins, everything is still okay. Yeah. So why do you think your your family has decided to to hold on to the land? this long? Uh, emotional heritage. Um, it's a part of the land run, part of the history of Oklahoma, and it's very important uh, in their memories. And I think just the fact that how the land was gotten, their granddad, great-granddad, made the run mm -hmm. and staked the claim. In 1993, which would have been 100 years, uh, we had a family reunion, and we all went up to the Kansas line, and Dave and his horse and bicycles, and we enacted the run. <laughs> we didn't make it clear to get here, but it was it was very, it was just a lot of uh, good, good feelings, and one cousin brought a gun and shot the gun and <laughs> started the run, and <laughs> so... For for great grandfather and grandfather was farming their sole source of income, or did they have to have jobs outside of the farm? Um, of course, the grand grandfather didn't. He died uh, early. Um, he was kicked by a horse, and so he. So then the oldest son then took over the responsibility of keeping the farm. Dave's dad bought farm out southeast of Tonkawa, and he had a clothing store in Tonkawa at one time that farming was his love and cattle. So. And and what about Grandma throughout all this? Grandma Rents? Yes. I, I didn't know her at all because mm -hmm. uh, she was gone by the time Dave and I married. Uh, all I know is what one cousin thought she was pretty strict, and so I don't know, really, I don't know much about her, other than she came from Missouri. Okay. So we don't know if she did much quilting or canning or... Oh, she canned, I can tell you that. Okay. And, uh, hmm, I don't know about the quilting, but her daughters are were beautiful quilters. I mean, tiny, tiny stitches, and... So she must have taught them. Mm -hmm. Good guess. Yeah. Um. Any idea of how record keeping was done on the farm through the years? I have. Yeah, no. it's kind of a hard question. From I wouldn't. I'd have to think they had a grandpa. Great would be Dave's grandfather. Uh, early on, he had the post office in his basement. Uh, Bliss, I think it was Bliss Post Office, and continued it until 
uh, one of the neighbors had scarlet fever, I think. One of the life uh, taking diseases, they came to the post office and exposed the baby at that time, and of course the baby died. And so that closed the post office. He, that was the end of the post office there. Dave's granddad um, was interim. He was uh, actually, I don't, I don't know that he was ordained, but was a preacher of the Baptist church. They, uh, the area out there built a Baptist church, and um, Dave talked about uh, his granddad made the arched windows. He could do that, and we drove around trying to find the building that never could. So, Do you know if there were any, uh, lots of helping of neighbors during that time? Yes, yes. Um, did they help uh, with uh, the crops and the combining, or was it just as it was, needed? There was not any combining on the, the it's all this grassland now, mm -hmm. and any help would have been labor, physical labor. And did they ever employ anybody outside of the family? I mean, if you're talking about the granddad, I'm sure no. Okay. And I, I just know that some of the neighbors were real good friends with Dave's dad and, and his brother. Uh, but I, I don't ever remember them talking about hiring anybody. Once the land came into ownership by your husband, did, what did he do with it? Uh, he, we, he had a cattle operation and we ran cattle on it, rented the, from the cousins and, you know, paid them pasture rent. Is anyone living on the land now? No. no. It's been a while since someone actually lived there. Actually, that would have been probably in the 50s. And it was a preacher of some church in the area. So, um, they, but no, the house was not. Well, of those okay. original six or seven children, did, did any of them go to college? Do you know? Of the original, let's see, there was University Pre Preparatory School here, and I know of three of them that did, and um, the oldest one that got married, I don't know that she, I don't know about her, and Aunt Lita, I don't know about her. Um, Aunt Lena, which is the closest. Uh, one to Dave, um, married George Wooster, who was the um, building supervisor of the buildings out at Northern. And, uh, he was from Iowa, but I think she just, I don't know that she went to the, it was the high school at that time, it was like the high school. And, one of the aunts taught grade school with the certificate she, you know, received from NOC. Um, so education was important to the family, obviously. Yes. Yes. Yep. In fact, of course, Dave is a graduate of OSU, and our youngest daughter is a graduate of OSU, and the other one didn't know where she wanted to go. <laughs> So she ended up at Weatherford. She had scholarships to different ones, and she chose Weatherford. Um, and the three cousins that, uh, their mother and we would be the wives of the cousins, and we were real close, and our children played together. And anyway, uh, the middle daughter is... Um, with the Philharmonic, New York Philharmonic in New York City, Manhattan. Um, Lisa went to school at OSU, I think for a couple years, and uh, 
but college wasn't for her. She got married. And then the oldest, Margaret, is a graduate of OSU. And uh, she has more. Uh, was at the University of Virginia in Virginia. I think she had, she probably has more uh, education than just the bachelor from OSU. Are any of those involved with farming or agricultural top jobs? Uh, no. <laughs> but no. they still hold on to the land. Some of yes. them. So. They, yeah, they own the land, and it's just the sentimental value of the land and the history of it. Yeah. Well, there, were there any stories passed down generation to generation surrounding the old farm? I, I, other than the story about Aunt Lena having to walk clear across uh, 80 acres to the well to get water, uh, they all had to work hard. Uh, uh, let me, I don't, well, the Aunt Lena married the uh, builder out here at Northern, and he um, contacted TB. And they moved to Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona, lived on the canal, and um, it was very, very tough. And I think that would have been in 1911, probably, early 1900s. And, uh, of course, he didn't, he wanted to come back to east of Oklahoma City, to the home where his sister lived, and he wanted to come home to to live out the rest of his life there. And I have letters that um, they all wrote to them, to Aunt Lena, when they were in in uh, Phoenix, and you know missing and and all, and uh, the grandpa was kicked. He was buried right close to Christmas time. And so there's very um, touching letters that that were sent to to her because she couldn't come back for the you know. Remember any favorite dishes? Could no, be well, cooking wise. The there's a story about um, Dave's grandmother always cooked had Sunday, the preacher over for Sunday dinner and um, fried chicken and uh, the, I'm, I'm trying to think the story anyway, the boys were hiding in the closet and I'm like, why were they hiding? I'll have to think of that story. But anyway, <laughs> they were. A little bit of mischief. Mischief, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if they had fried chicken, they raised chickens then. Yes, yes. So they, who, who, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I'm sure they ra they raised everything probably. Mm -hmm. The only thing they would buy would be possibly some bananas or something that wouldn't grow here. And I don't, I don't even know that there were bananas in the area then. Well, if they were going to go to the grocery store, where would they have to go? They would either have to come to Tonkawa or to Perry. Mm -hmm. And there is the, um, the one ant. Uh, of course, would take the wagon with the horses, and they would wait at the Black Bear or Red Rock Creek until there was more than one wagon to go across to make sure they made it across the to go to Perry to buy their groceries. Mm -hmm. We don't know any of the hardships like <laughs> like they endured. Um, uh, any stories about the country schools attendant when they were growing up? I think. I have to think about that. Um, I excelled, and I'm trying to think what that is. Let me think about that. Okay. I'm sure all I know is that the one ant that was got her teaching degree, taught in one of the schools out there with these uh, three sons, big boys, 
and uh, you know they were 19 20 years old going to school yeah. and they were of course big tall guys so but they were I guess going so they could learn well tell us a little bit about your background then what are you from Oklahoma or yes I'm from Oklahoma I, I was born in Kansas but that was because my mother was daddy were doctoring there but I grew up at Lamont, uh, which is 15 miles west, and um, graduated from Lamont High School. I worked in the um, State Exchange Bank over there when I got out of high school for about a year and a half or two years. Um, they had the watermelon festival every year over there. There was a big watermelon growing community. I, don't know if you know that. Uh, they used to uh, sell watermelons all over. I even remember one of the big watermelon growers, um, we'd, he'd have the seeds out on the uh, screen and we had to pick out, it was a, probably, I have no idea how much we were paid, but we got to, got to do that. And uh, they always had a queen for uh, it was a watermelon day when um, the water tower over there had a big cement base around it and they filled it with ice and, and watermelons and served cold watermelon free to everybody. And uh, I was queen, I have to think about one year, but anyway, I was elected watermelon queen one year. And um, went to Girl State. Um, I've gone some out here to Northern. Uh, I don't have a degree from there. Uh, I worked in Wichita Boeing for a couple years and came back to Tonkwater work in the bank. And that's where I met Dave because he was, this is his stomping ground, Tonkwater. And, and anyway, we, I think, met in February and were married on December 25th, 1956. And at that point, were you were you going to live in town, or were you living? Did you get a farm, another farm, or, or what? We lived in. I was living in a in a garage apartment, and we lived there probably for six months or so. But then we moved in with his dad out because his dad was, uh, was uh, a widow widower, and we moved out there, and so I could cook some. For, for him to help. And we lived there five years and our first child was born out there and she was three when we bought a house that used to be just across the fence here and uh, moved out here. And then in 75, we built this. So by out there, you mean the original acres? acres His, his father's his father built this log house mm -hmm. and so uh, we lived out there with him for um, a short five years and then it uh, with a child it was we wanted I guess I wanted to be <laughs> you know have my own home with with the children with the child I only just had one and uh, and um, this, this is a farm here, too? Or a it's farm? 160 acres, okay. yeah. And his his homestead, the, Dave's dad, it's in between the Shikaski River and the Salt Fork River. Uh, it's in between the rivers out there. And he, um, the original house that he lived in, and actually it was where Dave's mother and uh, his father were married and, and they lived out there and, and uh, his mother died when he was two. And then uh, this would have been evidently in probably 40, 41, must have been 41, the house burned down and so his dad then built the log cabin house. It's a house, two story. And is it still standing? Yes, our youngest daughter and her husband live, live in it. In fact, um, 
our oldest daughter. He's a retired Air Force um, person, and when he they got out of the Air Force, they moved out there. So his dad lived, built a house and lived there, and then Dave and I lived there for, well, Dave, of course, lived there for several years before. Well, he would have been from 41 through 48, 49. I don't know. I'd have to <laughs> figure that out. And then Dave and I lived in it for about five years. And then our oldest daughter wanted, had dreams of living in it. And so when they came back, um, they moved into it. And it's the log, the chinks in between the logs, um, didn't, they didn't have the material like we have now. And it was dried, and so it was, the wind would blow through, and the insects would come through. And, and my oldest daughter really did, uh, did not like the insects at all. And her, my granddaughter, their baby, um, lived out there probably... Um, close to a year probably and then the youngest daughter and her husband are in it now so it's still in it's, it's will be in the family too I, as long as they're able to work and uh, pay the taxes and right. okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. well are you actively farming uh, this 160 now I have it rented out it's pasture land um, so they never really got far from the land either then like no always no they, <clears throat> there there's some other land that is cultivated that uh, we bought while we were married and his dad of course had and so it's it is rented out to um, uh, a friend or uh, she's a hairdresser so her husband farms it. Uh, uh, he's a very good friend. He's very helpful, and he's a good farmer. So, well, farming sure has changed a, a uh, lot, even since you got this place, I would think. Oh, it has, yes. I used to help. I did about anything, except I wouldn't drive a combine. But I could drive the tractors and... And Dave, we used to have hay grazer planted down here, and he was so allergic to it. So I got to swap the hay grazer that it was, uh, so I could, was able to, you know, help him in that way. Mm -hmm. Any stories about holidays? Uh, of course, we never had a wedding anniversary. <laughs> it was always <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> And we would have, I would have a family for Christmas. Um, and um, the one aunt that was a school teacher, she would have uh, some holidays, but usually it uh, was up to when, I mean, they, we did it. It was, um, I liked doing it, enjoyed doing it, and they enjoyed it. Yeah. I have the infamous cedar tree or artificial. <laughs> oh, well, we used to, Dave would take the girls and go out into the uh, timber and cut uh, a stickery <laughs> pine tree, only that, whatever, I don't know what they are. But anyway, one year it was really exciting because there was a bird nest right up close to the trunk. And I, while they were out getting the tree, uh, I'd pop popcorn and anyway, they'd bring it in and we'd have a, a good time together. After the girls left, then it fell up to me to decorate the tree. I, then I had artificial tree uh, because <clears throat> we finally realized that and Christmas time, there was always colds and coughing, and they were allergic to the hmm. trees. So we bought the artificial tree. I still have it. It's 
they don't make them like that anymore, I guess, because we've had it a long time. And I still put one up. It's last year I, it was a chore, but um, got it up. And I'll keep trying to do it. <laughs> do you have a favorite, favorite chore on the farm over the years? Something you liked doing the best? Let me think about it. <laughs> well, about the worst. <laughs> well, I, I love living out, you know, um, and um, I've uh, the neighbor had these peacocks, and I just uh, when we lived in the first five years out with his dad, the neighbors across the river. One evening, I thought somebody was yelling for help, and it was the peacocks. And anyway, the neighbor had these peacock and had a hen that was sitting on eggs, and and Red said, you can have those eggs if you want them. So I went and got them, and I still have a scar on my hand from where when she left, she scratched, you know. she. But I got the eggs, and I had an old white hen, just a real fat gentle white hen and she hatched those peacocks out and uh, so I'm I'm sure they're not original anymore but I've always had peacocks since then um, are you, we had some Muscovy ducks you know what Muscovy ducks they're well, black and uh, white and uh, I put some eggs under them and I had a bathtub in my yard for a pond you know and um, actually it was the Muscovy duck eggs and this white hen hatched them out and these little ducks would get on that water and that hen was so fretful because the chickens just don't get on the water but I you know that was a I enjoyed that. <laughs> well were your girls involved with 4-H or? No they they helped with the farming. They both knew how to drive the tractors and, and Marianne before she was old enough to we thought she would fix sandwiches for us in the harvest time. And uh, so she was real good at fixing sandwiches and it was team effort on all of us. To... Well was your husband in 4-H when he was in school? No. No. No he's uh, they were kept plenty busy as with his dad's the cattle operation and and he he started driving a tractor when he was six years old so any interactions with county agents or home administration agents uh, i belonged to the home demonstration club when we were first married and of course he would uh, seek information from them, but as far as that, that's about it. Do you remember the name of your club? No. <laughs> <laughs> Long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I know that they had to make a dress, and one of my friends helped <laughs> me make the dress. So. But, but I did sew for the girls, and I could, I could sew. Well, farming is definitely a family team mm -hmm. effort, sure. Yeah, and it's so different now. Uh, I mean, to I don't think there'd be any farmer could have 160 acres and and be able to survive on it. Uh, yeah, they're just they have to have a job away from the farm. So how many total acres do you have now? I don't know. <laughs> well, at least 160 plus, yes. 40, plus 40. Yes, and then, of course, this is 160, and then there's the homestead. There's some land there. And, uh, so Enough to keep you busy. Enough to keep me involved in it. And, <laughs> and only uh, the bookkeeping and when things, uh, Larry will say, we need to do this, and, uh, and he always, before he does anything, he always asks me, 
uh, he wants to tell me what he's doing, which is very, very nice. Uh, keeps me up on it. I don't have to physically do. I used to mow the yard. The girls used to mow the yard, and uh, but I don't do that anymore either. Um. Well, you, you kind of touched on this earlier in the interview, but looking at the next 100 years, uh, where do you see the farm? I think it will always be with the girls. Uh, just one granddaughter. Now, I can't, I don't, she's, will be 13 in July, and uh, I don't know how, you know, I don't know what her feelings will be. I, I'm sure if it's up to her mother and dad, <laughs> I'm sure she'll keep it, you know. I, I don't know. I can't, you know, that's not, uh, I don't know. I can just only imagine she'd be influenced to keep it. Um, uh, Do you have anything else? Is there anything else you'd like to add that we haven't asked you about today? I had the letter with all these questions, and I was going to uh, review it, and I will do that. Um, so, <laughs> well, if you you think of anything, just let us know because we could always uh, add it into the transcript. But okay. we definitely appreciate your time today. You're very welcome. Thank you.